Skip Skype. The old Skype Rooney. The old Skype Rooney, as they say. Bruce is not online. So we have to go to the telephone. So let's do this. Let's go to the telephone and give him a holla, 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 holla. I guess we'll do this. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I guess we'll go to our next guest. Uh, <laughs> and we'll see what happens here. Uh, we will go to Dr. Judith Bryles, who was going to join us. Dr. Judith Bryles. And uh, she is going to join us from the great state of Colorado. And, uh... She's not on... We're just going to call her on the phone. We'll just do it that way. And we'll see what happens here. And Hello, I think we've got our guest. There she is. Dr. Judith, how Hi. are you, my friend? Hey. How are you? Pretty good, actually. We have got a great guest joining us today here on our big broadcast. Dr. Judith Bryles is with us. She uh, is in Colorado, and... Uh, she joins today here on a broadcast, an award-winning and best-selling author of 37 books, including 45 book awards for her publishing and marketing books. And uh, so talk to us a little bit about these awards, my friend. I guess I'll start there. Well, it's always exciting for authors to get awards. My, my, my newest book, um, which is called When God Says No, Revealing the Yes When Adversity and Loss Are Present, is not a religious book, but it does have spirituality in it, but it deals with when garbage happens to you, how do you overcome it? And it's really my own memoir. So that book has already earned nine book awards this year. And it's, um, I think, one of the things that, that's really important, and, and I know your listeners, 80% of your listeners, you realize it, have a book in them, or they think they do. That's what the, the great Erwin Ir Zucker always tells me. Erwin's always like, that, people don't realize they've got a book in them. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, but here's what I always say. Should it be allowed out? <laughs> and <laughs> because, so haven't, you ever, haven't you ever gone to a movie and you're wondering who in the world kissed off how many millions of dollars to make this piece of garbage? Yay! Really, people. Yes! <laughs> so I I have been there so many times, <laughs> but the that the that book is, is really my personal memoir. I, I'm someone who has lost two children. I've been paralyzed. I've had cancer. I had a partner embezzle a million dollars. Wow! Homeless. I've you know, but but I have a great life. I do exactly what I love. I work with authors all over the world, getting their books out. I mean, how cool is that? So. Life has hiccups, and that's what that book's about. And I think that what's important for writing, um, and for example, uh, you know, one of my authors was Lori Golden that I worked with. Her book, My House of Lies, which was on sexual assault uh, by her father for a gazillion years, that when you write from your heart and your passion, the readers will know you're not faking it. And so for publishing, like in my book, they know that, you know, I, I had people say, do you really want to reveal all this? I mean, you know, what the heck? I'm, you know, 70 years old. <laughs> Who cares at this point? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's fantastic. We have got... And anyway, there's books out there. Yes, we, we have got a great guest with us today. She joins us live here on our big program, Coast to Coast to Border to Border on iHeartRadio and also AMFM247.com. Dr. Judith Bryles is with us. She is an award-winning author, and uh, she joins us today here on our big broadcast. So I want to start with how, how exactly did you get in to writing? Tell me a little bit about this. Oh, you know what? It started when I was in second grade, and I always got in trouble because I passed notes. 
All right, so I just didn't know I was going to do this professionally. Um, and so that's, that's how I started writing. And my real writing, my first book, which I thought was going to be only one book, was based on a class I taught. I was a stockbroker at the time. I was one of E.S. Hutton's very few women they ever hired. And um, I taught a class called Women and Money. So I finally thought, you know, um, I'm going to get that out. And how that happened is I actually had uh, was president of a college foundation at the time, and I had had dinner with Art Bookwald, the columnist, the humorist, the author, the screenwriter. Um, and we were laughing about, you know, we both had three teenage kids, and I came up with an idea that, that – that about, we were talking about the draft because we had this conversation with my 19-year-old son at the time. And I said, you know what we ought to do, Art? In, instead of the draft, maybe we should take away their cars for two years. And maybe, that you know, think about the insurance you'd save, the petrol you'd save, that the grades would go up, they probably would be lady less sex. I mean, I had all this laundry list <laughs> going down. And, and we awesome. laughed about it. And then I went down to Mexico for a series of lectures I was giving, and I picked up a copy of the Los Angeles Times, and in it was his column. And in it were all my ideas. Oh, when I boy. Got home, there was a letter from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got home, there was a letter from him saying, hey, I really enjoyed meeting you, and maybe someday I'll, I'll use some of our, our ideas our. in a future column. <laughs> and I'm going, hey, dude, we're not talking future. We're past tense. But that was the epiphany that said, you know, Judith, if you don't start taking your own ideas and getting them out there, other people will. So I reached out to one of my clients who was an editor of a newspaper saying, hey, Jack, you know that class I teach up at the college? Maybe, you know, that could be a book. And he says, I don't write books. I don't know how. But one of my columnists is a sports in the sports area writes novels. So I had lunch with him, and he showed me, helped me write my first book what no one told me was that books breed books and so 36 books later that's where we are fantastic we have got a uh, great guest with us today she joins us live here in the broadcast dr judith bryles is with us so what is book shepherd tell us about this well, Book Shepherd is, for me, um, that, and, and my website is thebookshepherd.com. A Book Shepherd is someone who should be providing practical published guidance to move your book from your words, your manuscript, into some type of a published format that you don't have to apologize for. So, for me, we do a lot of very customized work. I bring together the designers, the cover designers, that if they need certain types of editing, that person comes into play. If they need illustrators, we go get those animals. And I oversee the project. I do also a lot of rewrites um, in it uh, as we go along. And then we move it to publication. And along the way, they learn how to market their book. Because one of the things, um, I, I will admit to you and your audience, I am a recovered New York snob. I believe that only legitimate books were published at New York, and that's just utter nonsense. And today, some, there are some wonderful, wonderful books that are coming up from this, the independent self-market. But my attitude is that those books better visually be able to compete with the quality that comes out with New York. So that's what I work on that side of it. I want to bring quality to it. I don't want to have the people apologize. And I will tell you, I admit, of the 18 books that I published with New York, and I was represented by William Morris when I was with New York, that uh, there's only two that I liked the way they look, the cover. Because once you go with New York, they don't give a twiddly dit what your opinion <laughs> is. You know, they're in charge. You're 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 just kind of an ancillary product that dangled on out there, and we'll come back and talk to you in a year and a half when we're ready to get your book out there. And that's the way it is. So, you know, people don't realize that. <laughs> uh, talk to well, us a little bit about that aspect of it. 
of the, of the traditional publishing firm? Yes, yes. Okay, so I came from that, and and, and, and what I'm grateful for um, was that I, I knew what quality was and that I was well cared for, well a well-kept author. And from when I was traveling and I was on tour, I always had personal escorts that got me from interview to interview to interview, whether I was in Dallas or San Diego or, you know, Boston. I never had to worry about how I ever got anywhere. It was always set up. Well, that's not that way anymore. And that I call publishing today is Velcro publishing. You've got about two weeks. If you get picked up, there was over a million books published. This is the reality check. Over a million books published every year. Only 10,000 come out of New York-type publishing houses. That means your odds are not so hot. They're not paying a lot of money, and their expectation in today's world is you will do all the marketing. The exception would be is if you are a star, um, whether, you know, a big name like Bob Woodward, they're going to take care of everything for you. I mean, you're going to bring in big bucks. But for the rest of us, which are called mid-list authors, you're going to do it. And if they, you're picked up and you're published, you've got about two weeks to show that your book's got some juice. It's building some roots. Otherwise, you will not be a Velcro book that they're going to come back and support. You will be the slimy egg that flows down the wall. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is you've 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 given us such positively here, there, there, uh, doctor. <laughs> well, I'm on a roll. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but but that's the reality. So, and then the other thing is, to to me, I think for anyone who is considering publishing, there are four elements. One that is quality important to you. It is really to me. So I want, I care how my books look, how they feel, what they look like on the interior. Um, that that quality factor is really important. So, and, and control is important. You know, I, I want to like what's coming out. I want to make sure that that back cover copy, because when someone picks up a book, you've got a book cover, you've got three to seven seconds max to grab an audience, three to seven seconds. Yes. Um, to snag him. Then if you, if you flip the book over, and I always write the back cover for all my clients because I'm very marketing-oriented, that back cover might be, so for example, on Lori Golden's book, My House of Lies, Awakening from Childhood Sexual Abuse, the back cover starts with, the nightly terror is real, and so are the words. Shh. Wow. This is our secret. Don't tell anyone. Okay, you've, you've got 20 to 30 seconds on that back cover. So this is where you're dealing with the benefits and the pain. This is what – one of my favorite books that I wrote, um, my doctorate's in conflict management and, um, and ethics to women undermine other women. That's a whole other topic we can get into. But uh, <laughs> um, I, one of my books I wrote for the healthcare industry was called – Sabotage. That was the title. The subtitle was How to Deal with the Pitbull Skunk, Snake, Scorpions, and Slugs in the Healthcare Workplace. Anyone who worked in healthcare knew who I was writing for. But the back of it said, the title was, headline, I write headlines, was Are There Saboteurs in Your Mitts? Do you have to work with pit bulls with lipstick? First bullet. The next bullet was, you know, has someone taken credit for your work? Third, there was a third bullet. By the third bullet, people said, "Oh my God, she's writing for me. I'm buying this book." And that's what that's how books are sold. The pick me up on the cover, and if you don't love your cover, if you think that the publisher has missed the boat, let me tell you, the boat's missed because it's got to be. It has to be the siren. And then the flip over is, oh, is there meat there? Is it chewy? Um, do they recognize the pain, et cetera? And then, and then a typical author, if they've got the print book, will scan and look like what it looks like. Is it visually easy to read? Is it receptive? Is it friendly? Fill in the blank. Um, and then the book's sold. That's how books are sold in the paper format, of which almost 70% of all books are in print format. Absolutely amazing. It is a uh, fantastic, fantastic guest with us today. She joins us live here in a broadcast. So uh, how do people get your books and, and get involved with what you're doing? 
Well, there's two things. Um, that if you go to my website, the book Shepherd, and Shepherd is spelled S H E P H E R D dot com, that I'm all over there. There's videos to watch where I actually talk about book shepherding. I have a video on every tab in the website that says this is what you're going to find here. Um, that I have a blog, a new blog that goes out every Tuesday. And I have an e-zine that goes out for subscribers every Wednesday. And on Thursday, I have a podcast. Um, and that podcast gets over 200,000 downloads a month. And wow. I have never repeated a show. Um, and even, and I've always told people when whether you do a blog or a, 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 a newsletter or an e-zine or a podcast or you fill in the blank, that the only thing that will excuse you is death or dismemberment. You are ah, 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 yes. <laughs> and, and as you know, you know, when you have shows that land on maybe Christmas or Christmas Eve or it could be yesterday with Yon Kippur, that if you've got a show in a regular audience, guess who has to show up? You yes. need to pre-record or you do it. You, you you know, that's your commitment to your audience. So that's the way I, you know, as an author, as a, as a book shepherd, as a guide, um, that's my commitment that you will find out. I mean, I've got, to, I've got to have surgery at the end of October. I broke my ankle. Do not do this, by the way. What a pain in the tush this has been. <laughs> um, and I have surgery again um, on and at October 30th. Well, at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, I'm in Denver, Colorado, 7 o'clock, I always have, I have 20 authors all over the country that I do live coaching for uh, on that. So they're saying, okay, we need you at the hospital at this time, and I said, I can't be there. I have a commitment. <laughs> so I'm telling everyone, okay, we got to start at 6.30 because I need to be at the hospital at 8.30, but by God, we will have our session together. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. It is a great guest with us today. She joins us live here in our big broadcast, Coast to Coast to Border to Border on iHeartRadio and also AMFM247.com. And, uh, Doctor, this has definitely been an honor and a privilege, and I would love to do it again. And uh, thanks for being I with us. I would be honored to come.